The episode begins in a wasteland where the moon covers the sun, causing an eclipse. Lightning strikes around the eclipse, and it strikes a dead tree in the wasteland. Its roots begin to move, and the tree rises. The moon moves away from the sun, and an evil being named Aku stands. He turns around and says he can smite the world as he did in the old days. In a city, the emperor tells the story of Aku's attack to his son Jack. He says he was young when Aku attacked and remembered the story of three ancient monks who lived at the top of a mountain. He goes to the monks, who help him create a magical sword he uses to defeat Aku and his demonic forces. The emperor walks away as he tells Jack to beware of evil, and Jack picks up a wooden stick and begins practicing. A strange shadow falls on the city, and the warning bells ring. Aku attacks, and soldiers attack him using their weapons. He shoots lasers at them from his eyes. The emperor rushes to retrieve the sword, but Aku grabs him. He instructs his mother to take Jack and the sword and begin their plan. They escape on a boat as Aku takes over their town and enslaves everyone. The emperor's mother places Jack on a large ship and disappears into the fog. The captain consoles Jack and begins teaching him. They arrive at a city, and the king takes Jack. He teaches him how to ride a horse, and they ride into the desert, where they meet an African man who teaches Jack how to fight. Jack learns to fight, and the man takes him to the Egyptians, who teach him several things. Jack makes his way to Roma and improves his skills. He rides through the forest and encounters an archer, who he greatly impresses. He trains with an ancient tribe of monks, and once his training is complete, he makes his way to the top of a mountain, where he meets his grandma. She presents him with a sword and a uniform, and he realizes he is ready. In Jack's hometown, Ku forces everyone to serve as slaves, and the emperor pushes a large totem. A demon guard tells him to go on break but refuses to let him drink water. He tries flogging the emperor, but Jack stops him. He fights several demons and easily defeats them. The emperor explains that Aku is using the town's resources to grow stronger. Jack swears to use the sword to kill him, but his father calms him. He tells him to let the sword lead him, and Jack rides away searching for Aku. He gets to Aku's tower, enters, and screams his name. Aku emerges and says no mortal can defeat him. Jack uses the sword to cut him, and Aku remembers it. He transforms into a monster and fights Jack, but Jack fights back. He prepares to kill Aku, but Aku opens a strange portal and sends him into the future. Jack screams as he moves through the portal. Jack falls from the sky in a futuristic world. Several cars fly around, and he lands on one. He moves on the cars, and one of them begins shooting him. Jack jumps to it and destroys it as he gently makes it to the ground. A large machine moves to him, and he climbs its tire and gets out of the ditch. Some people watch as he comes out and praises him for the skills he used. He tells them he has several questions and asks who their leader is. He says he wants to meet the person, and they tell him it's impossible to meet Aku. Jack sees several billboards of Aku, and the people tell him that Aku is their leader. They inform him that he has been their leader for as long as they can remember and suggest he gets a drink. Jack enters a strange club, and the loud music disturbs his ears. He realizes that only strange creatures are in the club, and a large lizard man hits him because he is staring. Jack apologizes, but he refuses to accept his apology and decides to fight him. Jack cuts off his arm and fights several lizard men. Meanwhile, several dogs talk to a reptilian man in a pod. They ask for his help, but he yells and steps out. One of the dogs translates what he says and says the man thinks they are crazy. They watch as Jack fights the lizard men in thick smoke, and he rips off their limbs. The dog goes to Jack and talks to him. He offers Jack a refreshment, and Jack enters the pod. He gets uncomfortable as he sits amid talking dogs. The dogs drink their drinks and introduce themselves. Ruffle, who is their leader, says that Jack is from 25 years before Aku and that Aku wants to spread his evil reign to other galaxies. The dogs tell Jack that they are archaeologists and were searching for fossils about their past but found a special mineral that produces energy. The waitress listens to their conversation, and they tell Jack that Aku enslaved them, stopping their archaeological work. Jack decides to help them, and they step out of the pod. They ask Jack his name, and he realizes that the people outside called him Jack, so he names himself Jack. Meanwhile, she leaves the club and makes her way to Aku's tower. 
In the tower, an alien race begs Aku to let them inhabit the earth because he has taken their water. Aku agrees but instructs them to pay homage to him by erecting a statue of him every month. He chases them out of the tower, and the waitress enters. The waitress informs Aku that a warrior has arrived and threatens to free the dogs from the mines. Aku sees Jack and laughs as he sends several drones after him. Meanwhile, Jack gets on a ship with the dogs, and they take him to their camp. Ruffle says that the dogs are forced to work or will be punished. A dog informs them that Aku's drones are coming, and they see them from the top of an abandoned building. Ruffle uses binoculars to stare at the incoming drones. He says there are several drones approaching and wonders how Jack will be able to defeat them. Jack says he will need weapons, and he sits with the dogs that night and makes a plan. They teach him how to operate a pen, and after forming the plan, he explains it to the other dogs, and they get to work. Jack watches as they set their plan in motion and stares at the energy rocks. He realizes they are extremely sharp and decides to use them as weapons. Jack makes several weapons using the rocks and forms a bow and an arrow. The dogs work tirelessly as they create traps around the area. Jack sees a large creature resembling a horse and moves a carriage, which impresses him. He takes the creature, and the dogs create armor for him. He draws his emblem on a cloth, and the dogs step on it, leaving their paw print. Jack stands on a hill in his armor and prepares for battle. The following day, a dog spots the drones and informs everyone they should take cover. Jack emerges with his horse creature as the drones arrive. He activates the traps, and it begins to destroy some of the drones. He causes several explosions using oil and rocks, rides around and destroys several drones. The drones surround Jack as he fights them, and one knocks him down. They trample on his emblem, but he breaks free and begins fighting them. Jack destroys several drones as they break his armor. He jumps across a fire as the drones follow him and rushes to some traps. Jack hides behind a trap and pushes it as the drones pass. He destroys several drones and rushes to a rocket. He uses the rocket's thrusters to destroy more drones and does the same with several placed rockets. Jack runs as the drones pursue him and jumps over a ditch. The drones continue running, fall into the ditch, and get destroyed by the spikes. The surviving drones get to Jack and surround him as he prepares to fight them. He stares at them as the dogs watch from inside the buildings, and they attack him. Jack destroys the drones and dodges their attacks. They begin to outnumber him and give him several scars as he falls to the ground. He refuses to give up and stands up, ripping off his torn shirt in the process. Jack screams in anger as he destroys the drones and is covered in the oil. He defeats all the drones and stands on a pile of them as he holds his emblem. Ruffle emerges and tells him that the dogs are forever loyal to him. They tell him they will continue their archaeology, and Jack says he will find a way to defeat Aku. Aku stays in his tower and realizes that Jack is stronger. He says he and Jack will meet when he decides and laughs. Jack uses several vines to form a trap. He places bait in the trap and hides in the woods while waiting for an animal to get caught. A wild boar emerges, and as it moves to the bait, they hear a large noise. The boar runs away, and a large creature runs through the woods. It steps on the trap and triggers it. Jack realizes that his leg is attached to the vine and the large creature drags him away. Several small people ride other creatures as they pursue the one that runs away. Jack gets on its back and stops it as it approaches a cliff. The small men thank Jack for helping them capture the creature and ask him to follow them to their village for a feast. Jack agrees as he realizes he is hungry and agrees to follow them. They tell him how their ancestors struggled to cultivate the land and say they tamed the beasts and used their strength. They arrive at the village, and Jack notices that the buildings are old. They place the apprehended beast in a building and prepare for their feast. That night, the small men sit as they eat and use the creatures as entertainment. Jack reluctantly eats the food because it doesn't taste normal. He notices that the men maltreat the creatures, and they tell him it's no different from how humans treat horses. Jack walks around and wonders why the men are so small while their buildings are so large. He sees the apprehended beast and gives it a fruit. It startles Jack as it asks him for help, and as Jack tries to talk to it, the small men arrive and drag him back to the feast while they punish it. Jack enters a strange gate and fights several creatures. He hears the beast begging for help, and as he destroys a strange orb, it gets up, and its eyes glow. 
Jack wakes up from the dream and sneaks to the beast. It begs him to free him, and Jack does as it says. The beast sneaks around with Jack, and they arrive at a gate. Jack uses his hairpin to pick the lock, and they enter. They see the other beasts and move to a tower. Jack climbs the tower and sees one of the beasts. It shoots energy that connects their eyes and tells Jack about how the beasts had created paradise outside of technology. He says that the strange men fell out of the sky and attacked them, forcing them to serve against their will. The old beast says they must defeat the small men, or their tribe will be eradicated. Jack decides to help and makes his way to the orb. The beast watches as he climbs the tower and accidentally wakes the small men. They apprehend the beast, but Jack uses his sword to release it. The other beasts arrive, and Jack and the beast rush to the top of the tower. The beast lands on it and destroys it, severing the link it has to the beast. They stand up and fight the small men because their weapons are useless. The men get into their ships and leave the town as the beasts celebrate. The leader of the beasts thanks Jack and tells him he can find what he needs to defeat Aku if he travels north. Jack walks through the woods, he gets to a stream and drinks water. A deer emerges, and he gives it space to drink beside him. They hear a strange noise, and Jack gets attacked. He runs through the forest as he escapes his pursuer and sees a strange ship. Jack sees that there are several people working on the ship. The people stare at him, and Jack's pursuers emerge. They scan the area and decide to exterminate the people for breaking several rules. The people panic and run around, and the giant robots attack them and destroy their machines. Jack gets angry as he sees what the robots are doing. He fights and destroys several robots, and as he beheads one, it flies into the air and goes to alert others of their location. The people panic because their means of escape have been discovered. A man says they can ask Jack to fight the robots as a distraction, giving them enough time to escape. Jack says he is willing to help but says he can't fly. They put him through several tests and formed a special suit for him. Jack accidentally activates the jet pack and flies into the air. He gets the hang of flying as he uses the controls on his palms. The scientists watch and send decoy drones that Jack easily defeats. The scientists have fun that night, and Jack tells them how Aku sent him to the future, and he says he wants to return to his time. The scientists tell him how they can send him into the future and instruct him to be on a pod in the shop before they reach light speed. Aku's robots arrive the following morning, and the ship launches. They reach the first blockade, and Jack goes out of the ship. The robots attack the ship, but Jack fights them. He uses his thruster to heat his sword and uses it to destroy the drones that try to enter the ship. More drones arrive and attempt to steal the fuel, but he stops them. He fights and defeats most of them, and the rest withdraw. They form a large gun, and Jack decides to abandon his return to his time to stop it. He flies to the gun and uses his sword to deflect its attack while the ship reaches light speed and leaves. The gun explodes and propels Jack back to Earth. A strange desert land where several people trade. Jack moves around secretly while a strange figure follows him around. He compares an image on paper to a banner and enters the building. He meets a strange man who emerges and tells Jack he knows why he is there. Jack gets excited, but the man begins talking about carpets, and Jack gets confused. He stares at the symbol, and the man demands to see it. Jack shows the man the symbols, and he realizes it's from the Woolies. He takes Jack to a secret room, showing him the light of eternity. Jack reluctantly places his hand in the light, and a jewel shows. The man tells him only a man with a pure heart can possess the jewel. An explosion occurs, and Jack is separated from his sword. He fights off his attackers, and a strange woman arrives. She helps him fight the robots, and they jump out of the building. Jack follows her as they evade their pursuers, and they ride on camel-like creatures as they escape the city. Jack introduces himself, and the woman suggests they find shelter for the night. The woman introduces herself as Ikra and says her father fought a coup but lost and is imprisoned in a ring of fire. She says that there is a jewel in the desert that can help her defeat Aku and free her father. Jack says their meeting isn't a coincidence and he is searching for the jewel. He suggests that they work together to find it. The moon rises, and the duo continue their journey as they ride through the desert. They fight a worm monster that swallows Ikra, but she cuts its stomach and frees herself. They continue their journey on foot, and a flying monster grabs Ikra. Jack jumps on it, tames it, and forces it to release her. 
Jack falls into quicksand, and she helps him out using a stick. They continue running, and as the night reaches, they sit by a fire and rest. They continue their journey the next day and enter a small town where they rest. The duo continues running and arrives at a small forest. They find the jewel floating above a pond. Jack talks to the jewel and asks for its power. It tests them to see if their hearts are pure, but they fail the test, and a giant monster emerges. Jack refuses to fight it, and it strikes him with its laser. Ikra transforms into a giant and defeats the giant monster. She retrieves the jewel and breaks it as Jack celebrates. She begins laughing and transforms into Aku, revealing that she and Aku are the same person. He laughs at Jack because he deceived him, and as Jack tries to fight him, he transforms into a bird and says he will fight him when he has a way to defeat him and his sword. Aku laughs as he flies away, and Jack swears to destroy him as he screams and plants his sword into the ground. To be continued. Thank you for watching. Check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time.